Hello, um, my name is Fernando Varela. I recently got my PhD in Spanish and Portuguese at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, and starting August, I will be an assistant professor of Spanish at Texas Lutheran University in Seguin, Texas. So today I would like to speak with you about extraterrestrial intimacy and social injustice in Amar Escalante's film, La Región Salvaje, and translated in English as The Untamed. Released in 2016, Amar Escalante's La Región Salvaje, or The Untamed, is an award-winning film that explores the relationship between social hypocrisy, violence, injustice, and extraterrestrial life. Set in a small town in Mexico, the film focuses on an octopus-like creature, you see there, that lands in a farm and is taken by an older couple who are also naturalists. That is, they study plants and animals through qualitatives or in observational methods. Their name is Senor Vega and Marta Vega. The movie begins with a woman named um, Veronica, who had just finished having sexual intercourse with the extraterrestrial creature, but who also hurts her by making a small incision in her waist. Soon enough, we learn from the other couple that the creature needs human companions with whom to engage sexually, because the, this older couple take care of the, of the creature in a barn. Doing so gives pleasure to both the creature and the human, but not everybody is a perfect match for the creature because it eventually gets bored and starts to hurt someone who repeatedly has sex with it. This was precisely the case with Veronica. And so the other couple, in Senor and Senora Vega, tell her to find someone else that will be willing to sexually engage with the creature. When she goes to the hospital to treat the wound in her waist, she meets a nurse named Fabian, and who in turn has a secret affair with Angel. Angel, we later found out, is actually the husband of Fabian's sister, Alejandra. Despite having an affair with his brother-in-law, Angel, however, is homophobic in public. Alejandra, on her part, feels sexually frustrated in her marriage to Angel, who also physically hurts her. Veronica manages to convince Fabian to have sex with the creature, which he initially thoroughly enjoys. Things get more serious, however, when one day a farmer finds Fabian's comatose body by a creek. At the hospital, the doctors inform Alejandra that her brother is in an indefinite coma. The night before this event, interest, interestingly, a drunken angel returns home and tells Alejandra that he did something terrible as he starts crying. When Alejandra enters Fabian's apartment later on, and she finds his cell phone and reads the sexual messages exchanged between him and Angel. Alejandra then um, presumes that Angel was the one who uh, beat up Fabian. And so calls the pol and then she calls the police immediately. The police arrest Angel and take him to the police station. In the meantime, Veronica meets Alejandra for the first time in the hospital and also convinces her to have sex with the creature. Alejandra deeply enjoys it, but also learns that the brother, that her brother um, also had sex with the creature. She also finds out about the creature's violent tendencies and deduces that it might have been the creature and not Angel who actually hurt Fabian. However, she does not report to the police about the creature's existence and instead 
and instead remains silent, precisely because the creature gives her so much pleasure, a pleasure that she, hasn't, that she says hasn't had in a long time as a married woman. Later in the film, Angel is released from jail and immediately confronts Alejandra and reminds her that he never actually heard Fabian and that he wants to rejoin her so that their children's lives are not disrupted. When Alejandra says no, he tries to take a pistol out of his pocket, but accidentally shoots himself in the leg. Alejandra then decides to take her husband to the creature because she knows that there are only two options. The creature will either heal or kill Angel. When she comes to the barn where the creature is located, she sees that Veronica's dead body lies by the door. So presumably the creature killed Veronica. Alejandra still leaves Angel in the creature's room as the creature slowly uncoils from the rooftop and comes down to meet Angel. The next scene is Senor Vega carrying a wheelbarrow with Angel and Veronica's bodies and depositing them in what, in what appears to be a mass grave containing, containing a number of anonymous bodies piled up. The movie ends with Alejandra picking up her two children from school. Escalante's film then is a movie that provides a thought provoking depiction of extraterrestrial intimacy while also shedding light on unaddressed social problems, including homophobia, misogyny, hypocrisy, and sexual assault. This presentation discusses La Región Salvaje's take on the urgency of addressing social injustice and the urgency of redefining what it means to be human at an interplanetary scale. As the movie unfolds, the creature's tentacles reach beyond the barn and touches on the main characters and more broadly, social injustice. In doing so, it, it also invites a reflection on the meaning of being human, as well as the origin of life itself beyond Earth. I argue that this extraterrestrial being then unsettles terrestrial foundations by questioning social and biological hierarchies, bringing a conception of astrobiology as deeply in connected with rather than utterly separate from extraterrestrial life forms. This connection between the extraterrestrial and the terrestrial was also a main objective in a special issue of the journal Environmental Humanities. Titled Familiarizing the Extraterrestrial, Making Our Life in Making Our Planet Alien, sorry. The special issues editors, Isvan Pratt and Juan Francisco Salazar, contend that modern, uh, modern cosmology and extraterrestrial studies have now become interdisciplinary topics across the humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. This interdisciplinary turn has revealed that the natural sciences, including astronomy, does not simply portray the universe objectively. Instead, it familiarizes the extraterrestrial by using terms and frameworks familiar to us humans. Just as it sometimes studies extreme environments on Earth as analog sites to understand extreme environments in outer space. In short, the natural sciences tap into humanistic ideas as it redefines what it means to be human, what it means to be alive, and what it means to live in, an, in a quote-unquote inhospitable environment. One of the special issues contributors, um, Lisa Messeri, centers on gestures of cosmic relations and the search for another Earth. The author argues here that the quest to find, in a quote, to, the quest to find a planet like our own, as with human space flight, promises greater understanding of places elsewhere in the universe, but also provides a mirror for examining terrestrial relations. In the specific case of La Región Salvaje, the film records to an extraterrestrial specimen 
to analyze the terrestrial problem of social injustice. That is, it brings a living thing from outer space to unsettle and reveal the myriad social problems affecting 21st century humans, like homophobia, misogyny, and social hypocrisy. Furthermore, the film's title in Spanish, The Wild Region, seems to invite a re redefinition of humanity in relation to unexplored moments of sexual intimacy across species lines and at an interplanetary scale. In this sense, the creature's tentacles and cephalopod looking body is not coincidental for it reveals a theoretical and speculative undercurrent in media studies that portrays media as cephalopod in nature due to its far reaching tentacles. In 2020, William Brown and David H. Fleming published a philosophical study about cephalopods in contemporary media and media in contemporary cinema and media titled The Squid Cinema from Hell, Kinotheusis Infernalis and the Emergence of Tutulu Media. This work both studies the presence of cephalopods in digital media and argues that contemporary media itself is cephalopod because it behaves as an intelligent an octopus alien. They write, uh, and I quote, but what personally we wish to suggest is that if humans are interconnected or entangled with the world, then cinema can also be a machine that connects objects, not least through montage, which can be a machine for making otherwise different objects connect or poetically to rhyme. What is connecting and connected tentacles and its shape shifting stim simulating form the cephalopod may just be a capital metaphor for cinema then, as well as for a universe defined not by Euclidean space split into three dimensions, but a dimensionless, dimensionless and cinematic space-time in which everywhere and everyone is connected via wormholes to everywhere and everyone else, being thus a kind of gigantic mega brain that is weird, soft, loose, and other, and where all things do connect." End of quote. Escalantes, La Región Salvaje is a suggestive example for this definition of cinema because it features a cephalopod-like creature that connects different peoples along with their anxieties and desires. Escalantes' film connects natural history, extraterrestrial life, and social injustice through its main characters, who are each in their own ways struggling to live in a society marked by separation, hypocrisy, and violence. The creature, like the film's cinematic montage, creates wormholes during its tentacular and sexual encounters with Veronica, Alejandra, Fabian, and Angel. Most importantly, the creature sheds light on the daily physical and emotional violence that marginalized communities experience on a daily basis within a patriarchal and heteronormative society. The movie's ending with piled, with piled up bodies, for example, may have come from both the creature and acts of violence committed by, by other humans. Just as Fabian may have been killed either by the creature or Angel. Although the movie acknowledges that the creature did hurt Fabian, it also shows us a scene in which a drunken Angel cries about a terrible thing he did. The film then may be an extraterrestrial approach to what Donna Haraway famously termed the um, Tutulu scene. Under this term, human and non-human beings are connected through tentacular intimacies in which, and I quote, human beings are not the only important actors in the Tutulu scene. And of quote, and thank you very much. <laughs>